Uh, we, we do uh, obviously spend an excessive amount of time training, particularly with regard to airdrop, um, which is the, which was the focus of this um, this JOAX, this joint uh, exercise uh, with the Army. And the reason that it's uh, it's done at Pope, as you know, is because uh, Pope is the uh, the Army's CRG location, and so uh, it is important to maintain a close connection between the Air Force and the Army uh, with regard to joint training. So we get familiar with uh, each other's um, operations and, uh, and get, get familiar with, uh, with habit patterns uh, of, of each other in order to, uh, to effectively execute the mission as, uh, as tasked. Absolutely, this was very much a uh, large-scale exercise. Um, li like you said, it combined uh, heavy equipment, which uh, came, out, came out of the aircraft first. Uh, we had three uh, heavy equipment on, on the main, main night, three C-17s, which dropped heavy equipment, and then uh, one uh, Canadian C-17 that uh, dropped CDS, container delivery system, uh, bundles, as well as supplies. And then after following that, uh, I believe we put approximately 1,400 Army personnel on the DZ via personnel airdrop, uh, which was a combination of uh, U.S. Air Force C-17, uh, one Canadian uh, C-130, and then uh, active duty C-130s as well from the U.S. Air Force. But yeah, it absolutely is uh, highly incumbent upon the aircraft commander to, to ensure the overall safety of, of his aircraft. And then the, uh, the, lead, um, the lead airdrop aircraft commander is, is responsible for maintaining a uh, safe uh, position of, of his uh, entire formation and uh, maintaining the safety, safety of the flight. All that stuff. Yeah, it, it's absolutely very, very important. I mean, for us, our entire job revolves around the mission, and uh, so we cater to the needs of of the uh, the personnel or the the crew members on board the aircraft. So for this particular mission, the uh, air medical evacuation personnel advise us of their requirements, um, and a typical t typically those requirements um, revolve heavily around maintaining a, a good cabin pressure for the. Uh, uh, for the patients, if the patients have uh, particular uh, wounds or uh, particular injuries that uh, they they can't, um, or at least climbing to higher altitudes would cause significant damage to them, then we fly at lower altitudes, or, or we coordinate uh, different routes of flights in order to expedite our our mission to get them where they need to be uh, as as expeditiously as possible. Uh, we, we we work heavily with with TSUC, and they they typically plan our routes and uh, plan it any coordination such as uh, working with tankers if, if need be, but uh, absolutely the objective is to get the patient uh, to the, the best care possible in the most expeditious fashion. If that involves us uh, accepting two uh, air refueling uh, rendezvous in order to, to do that, we will. Um, the vast majority of the air medical evacuation patients now in the current um, conflict go to Landstuhl um, Army Medical Center, which is in, uh, in Germany. Uh, so that, that is definitely the primary care uh, facility for them. As far as the, uh, the pilots are concerned, uh, our, it, it's pretty transparent to us as, as far as the differentiation between air medical evacuation missions and other missions. Um, we can pretty much tailor um, our procedures um, ar around a, a wide variety of, of missions. For our loadmasters, it's, it's a little bit different because uh, now they have to, to, to work with uh, different equipment as far as setting up uh, the, the aircraft and then also coordinating with the air medical evacuation team. Um, we, we coordinate with them as well, but uh, as far as uh, the front end procedures in the cockpit, it's, it's mostly transparent to us.